Today, we're going to learn a little bit more about how to make your drawings look more three-dimensional with volumetric solids and shading. So before we begin, we need to think about some shapes that we want to add shading to. I'm going to draw a few different shapes in an imaginary still life, and you can create any shapes you like if you're drawing along with me. First, I'm going to draw a cylinder. And to create a cylinder, I'm going to create one, two ellipses, and connect the very edge of those ellipses with straight lines. If you'd like to use a ruler, that's fine, but today I'm just using pencil and paper. Next, I'm going to create a sphere, and that's simply a circle. And you can see I'm not a robot. I'm just going to draw lots of lines for the edge of my circle, and then I'm going to refine those edges later. They're not perfect, and neither am I. Next up, I'm going to create a cone. I'm going to create another ellipse and then a point up here. I'm going to connect my point to the edge of each side of my ellipse. There you go. And I'm also going to create a, a cube, which is a three dimensional version of square. So I'm going to create my square here, one part of this square. And next up, I'm going to draw another square up and to the right a little bit. And this can go in any direction you wish. And this is also the way of drawing just about any shape prism you'd like. So instead of drawing a square, I drew a hexagon and I draw another hexagon around. The rule is I am going to connect all the matching corners and you can draw any shape like that, a triangle, an octagon, a pentagon. It's lots of fun to create volumetric prisms. So here I have my cube, my cone, my cylinder, and my soon-to-be sphere. I'm going to put these all on a baseline. And pretend they're on this imaginary table. The next thing I need is a light source. I can't add any shading unless I know which direction my light is coming from. So as this is an imaginary still life, I can also use an imaginary light source. I'm going to decide that my light source is coming from this corner. So, boop, boop, boop. Here is my light source. And I'm going to darken the edges of all these shapes so you can see them a little better. And then we'll come back and do some shading. Because our light source is here, the sides of each of these objects here, 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 and here will be the lightest, and the ones furthest away will be the darkest. When you're thinking of shading something like a cube, you can shade each side or facet its own tone. So I'm going to create really flat, even shading on this one because there's not a lot of texture here on my cube that I'm going to put. So the brightest tone is likely to be, if we think about the rays and how it's going to hit, it's likely to be the lightest is here. Second lightest will be here and the darkest will be here. So perhaps I'm going to just create a very subtle tone here, press a bit harder, here, and I'm also overlapping, it can go in different directions, and then I would take this side, and this would be my darkest shape. This would only really be applicable for a shape that has facets or very hard edge sides. If you can see, the other shapes that I have here are curving, so we're going to need some different techniques for those. We have our cone here, and for this, I'm going to use something called hatching lines or contour lines, and we're going to think about these lines as hugging the form, curving around it as if it's wearing a stripy shirt. And these stripes are going to get closer together where it's darker, and they may even fade away or get further apart where it's brightest. So I'm going to start in the shadowy parts and curve it around because we want to show that 
this cone is a curved form. And if you start at the darkest point, then you can always extend it out more gradually. If you start at the lightest point, you may have to make your shadow quite dark. For hatching lines, I have to stay going in the same direction. But you can see how it starts to give the illusion of this wrapping feeling. So now we can do something different with our cylinder. Let's think about how the light would hit the cylinder. It will be very similar to how the light is hitting this. So this is hatching. This was solid shading. And on this, we're going to use something called stippling. And stippling uses dots. And I'm going to have to speed this up because it is a little more time consuming. I'm going to create many, many more dots closer together where there's a shadow, and I'm going to have fewer, smaller dots that are further apart where it's brightest. Okay, that's about as much as I'm going to do with stippling. It does take a lot of time, so you may want to use stippling for something that you're not going to create over large spaces, or use a mark making tool that makes bigger dots. Next, I'm going to show you my favorite mark making technique for volumetric shading, which is cross hatching. It's like hatching, but you get to go in different directions. So, let's try it with our sphere. Because the light is hitting this area, we're going to consider this space to be the lightest, and then we're going to have rings of area that gets darker and darker as it goes out. So I'm going to start in a way that looks very much like hatching. These lines are going to hug the form of the sphere, show that it's very round, and fade a little bit away where it gets closer to our highlight space. I'm actually going to use my eraser and get some of those overlapping areas out of the way. Next, I'm going to start to create these curving hugging lines in another direction. Because it's round, my lines will also be rounding. And to make this even darker, I would go around in another angle and layer again where I want my shadows to be darkest. Because we have light that is hitting these objects while also sitting on this table, we want to add something else called a cast shadow. The shadow on these I like to call the object shadow, and then the shadow on the surface is the cast shadow. Just like when you're standing on the ground and you see the shadow of yourself, these will be very similar in shape, but just imagine them distorted and stretched out. They don't have a hard edge, so try not to do a hard outline on them and they're going to be darkest right underneath the forms and fade out of it. So I'm going to take this shape here, stretch it this way. So this is just an introduction. There are lots of different techniques you can use. These are just a few of the ones that I use most frequently. I hope that you'll try it out and tell me how it goes.